what's up YouTube this is Felice for one unique life here today on my career series to talk about um, a career that I have been in for about 14 years um, and it is a very exciting career a very growing career so I just kind of wanted to give some pointers out there for those who are considering um, traveling down the same path that I traveled down and the career um, that I'm discussing today is the career of radiology so um, the radiology program, uh, as some of you may not know, is like the x-ray tech, CAT scan tech, MRI. It kind of is inclusive of all of those uh, specific modalities. But the one today that I'm going to talk about is the radiology um, program. And I'm just going to be kind of referring to some of the notes that I have here. So the radiology program consists of two, basically two different parts. You have a didactic part, which is when you go to the classroom and they go over like the physics, they go over the anatomy, and then you have like the clinical side of things. Um, to get your radiology degree, degree, it results in an associate's degree, and I think that they, uh, the ARRT, um, made it mandatory that you get a uh, associate's degree, whereas before you can just go to like a hospital program and then uh, get uh, certified in it. But I think they have changed those things. Um, currently. So it usually takes two years um, of study. I do see that there are some programs that offer like a 16-month program, but again, it results in an associate's degree. Um, you can also get a bachelor's degree in radiology. Um, it's not very common and it's not anything that you would need. I think that if you were to get like a bachelor's in radiology, you're kind of focusing on maybe going into the managerial side of things, which can help in the long run. I do believe, I'm not sure what the associates, or excuse me, the bachelor's program entails, but I will tell you that the associate's program uh, is pretty much all you need. So the average cost for a two-year program, I would say is between ten to $15,000. Um, on the lower end and on the higher end, I would say about twenty to twenty five thousand um, dollars. The classwork, the workload is heavy. I'm just being honest with you. I went through the program at Ferris State University, um, and I will say that it was a lot of work. You have the um, anatomy and uh, physiology courses. You have the physical uh, physics course courses. Um, the physics most people struggle with and so a lot of people allocate more of their time to the physics part of things. You will have patient care which is easy peasy which talks about like transporting uh, stretchers, medication routes, um, the um, vital signs and things of that nature. So I think that was rather easy. You'll talk about some pathologies. So um, in this field you'll be able to identify some things that um, doesn't look right, you know, and so you'll kind of go over some of the cases that your professors will present to you. There's image production and then there's the lab. So in the lab, you'll do like positioning. Um, so you'll, you'll practice how to do a chest x-ray, how to do a wrist x-ray, and so forth and so on. So I would just say with you, uh, share with you that some of the expectations that you should have in the radiology program is to plan to spend a lot of time studying. Um, these tools are definitely helpful in the field. Just spend as much time as you can studying um, what you have given because you will have to take a board exam, in which I'll discuss that as well. And then a lot of curriculums, um, of course, I'm a little bit more biased towards Ferris State University's curriculum because it had us very, very well prepared. But a lot of programs will have a uh, pass or fail um, kind of like an exam near the end. You have to pass it in order to actually graduate and get your degree. So um, spend a lot of time studying. Don't waste your time. So you want to you want to pass these classes because typically you will start um, at a specific um, point in the program and if you fail one class you'll probably have to wait until the next um, round of those classes to start so it'll put you further behind. So the expectation is to have no life. Um, you want to definitely hone in on the positioning as this will prepare you for the one-year clinical. Most uh, often the clinicals are unpaid, unfortunately. However, it is giving you the opportunity to put what you've learned in the classroom to actual play. Um, so spend a lot of time on positioning. I know that um, I also have a, a bachelor's degree and some of those classes that I took there don't really apply to the field. 
but these classes actually apply to the field. You have to know your positioning and um, we'll talk a little bit about the clinicals next, but if you learn anything from this is really hone in on those positions. Know what a chest x-ray is, know what a hand x-ray is, because this can result in whether or not the um, uh, site that you do your clinicals will hire you or not, because they are definitely watching you. So you to talk about a little bit about the clinicals that you typically spend about a year at, um, you usually have like a preceptor or coordinator. So at my site, I had a um, coordinator there, and so she basically controlled the schedule. And they will put you um, usually with like a technologist, and that technologist will, um, for Ferris's program, they gave us a list of comps, things that we had to master. Uh, and at that point in time, I think you had to have like three perfect, let's say, chest x-rays in order to, to get gain your mastery um, in that. And... Um, so you have to do like chest, like a foot x-ray, knee x-ray. You'll have some um, fluoroscopy type exams where you look at um, the upper uh, gastrointestinal area. You'll watch them drink, swallow and evaluations, so forth and so on. So in your clinicals, they are actually putting some of those um, skills and things that you learned in the classroom to play. So definitely, definitely hone in on um again on the positioning classes so again you'll have like a, a preceptor or a coordinator you have to keep track of every competency because you'll need this for your board exam I think um, currently you can do this online whereas before I had to keep like a sheet and they had to date it um, so let's say I did my three chest x-rays perfectly my coordinator was signed off and then you had to submit it to I believe my professor or something but now they have upgraded their system where you can insert these masteries online um, you will rotate between shifts so expect that so especially if your clinical is at a hospital my understanding is some people can do clinicals at like an outpatient facility which is a typical nine to five hours if you could I would recommend trying to get in the hospital because it would give you that true feel of in of an emergency. If there was a rollover car accident, you're right there in the thick of things. If a patient is having an emergency surgery, you're right there um, in the OR using that C-arm and using those skills um, as you had learned in the classroom. So uh, you'll get a lot more experience in my opinion in a hospital I have worked um, in a doctor's office and I have worked in an imaging center and by far the best experience was in the hospital and in the hospital you have a better opportunity to advance and in part two of this and I have other parts coming up in my career series you have the opportunity to transfer to other areas and each area brings more money it's wonderful so again, you usually rotate during uh, between shifts. So we did like a typical 7 to 3.30 for maybe two months. And then the next two months, we did like a 3 to 11.30. And we also did midnights, which is important because each shift has a different expectation. Um, second shift, typically, you might have a lot more um, car accidents because people are getting out of work. You have a lot more um, children um, because they're out on the playground once they get out of school and things of that nature. So it's a completely different feel with each um, shift. I would say with third shift you have a lot of the alcoholics and people that are threatening you. So you have to kind of know how to handle those situations. So you'll rotate typically between each shift. So if your clinical is far away from your home, such as mine, plan to move to that area. There are some people that can commute. My commute would have been an hour and I'm here in Michigan and we have really, really wicked um, winters. So that was not an option for me and I don't like to drive in the snow. I'm kind of like the granny, you know, but um, plan to move to that specific area. Um, you need to plan for the cost of that. Again, most clinicals are unpaid, so you'll have to pay for like your apartment, you have to pay for your laundry, you have to pay for your food. All that needs to be factored in, just as a heads up. Next, you have to be professionally aggressive. You have to put yourself out there for every available task or procedure or exam, even if you are not 100% confident, they are watching you. 
Um, and I know not at my clinical site because thankfully both of us got hired and we advanced, but at some of the other facilities here, I believe in the Grand Rapids area, when they had a lot more students there, they didn't hire everyone. So it can be the difference between if you were a go-getter or if you were not. So if you're interested in staying at that site, be a go-getter and just, just kind of put yourself out there. The more you know, you know, the more empowered you are and the more marketable and the more attractive you are to that employer. So definitely make sure that you are professionally aggressive. I'm not saying push anybody or be vindictive or anything of that nature. Just be professionally aggressive. Be that go-getter and get it done. I mean, you want to make it a lasting impression on them and they are definitely watching you. And I know from the student aspect and I also know from the tech aspect. And we like those who are, like I said, who are professionally aggressive, who are assertive, who will jump right in there, even if they're not sure, but at least they made that effort to do so. Um, so as I say, some are paid and some are not. Mine was unpaid at first. They told us that when we uh, initially went to our site that the um, interns were not or the externs were not paid. However, there was such a dire need that they ended up hiring us as casual, so as needed, um, technologists. And um, it was really nice because we went from, we ended up getting some waitressing jobs, so we were making like 4 or $5 an hour. And then when they hired us, we were making $18.96 an hour, $18.96 per hour. So that's nice when you're broke. It may not amount to a lot now, but going from not making more than $5 to $18, over $18 an hour was really, really nice, just to say that. And we had, um, we always had hours, and that was really nice as well. Just to forewarn you, there will always be a mean or standoffish tech. We have had texts that said, I don't want to have anything with, to do with students. Don't have them shadow with me. I don't want to talk to them. That's just the fact of life. You will have people that are not as approachable as other people. Um, just try to keep your distance from uh, those you know uh, are mean and then those that you can direct your questions to. As an example, I remember um, the first day that I went to my clinic hall, I had a tech that I didn't know anything about. Later on, I learned about her. But she had asked me what the technique, and the technique is what you will use for a specific exam. She had asked me what the technique would be for an exam. And I was so nervous. And I know I said to you all, practice the positionings and knowing your techniques and things of that nature. But I was so nervous that I, a person was like, the person was 100 pounds, but I gave her the technique for a 300 pounder and she just chewed me out. And I'm like, okay, I'm just a student here. So at that point, I knew to kind of steer clear of her. Um, take notes. Uh, I, there have been times that I have precepted people and as a preceptor one of the more annoying things is to have to constantly repeat yourself. So if I give you a pointer um, to correct something that you were doing wrong and I see you continuing to make that uh, same mistake or if you're asking the same questions then I'm going to lose my faith with you and then when the director calls me in and asks you know me how you're doing you know I want to be honest because we want to have the best text as possible so take notes even if it's the simplest detail I don't care write that de detail down because once you get your competencies and they may hire you as a casual and you are in that ER on your own you want to have something to rely on because you may not have time to get on the phone and call the tech down in the other department. So write even the simplest details down. This will can either make or break you um, in your clinical experience. So after you have all of your, um, your masteries done, you've completed the year of your clinicals, you've completed the year of didactic work, you passed the uh, final um, examination that some sites do. Ferris State University located in Big Rapids, Michigan is an excellent program, well-known pro program, at least here in the state of Michigan. Um, that um, prepare, This all prepares you for the board exam. Um, I, I know that there was a CARE Act that they were looking to have passed to and force people to become registered prior to practicing. So, and I know that some sites are being uh, fined for techs that are working that are unregistered, but get your registry done and get it done as soon as you are done with your clinicals. 
um, it attests you from everything that you learn from day one to day um, to the last day that you're on your clinicals. It's going to test you over everything. Um, it costs about $200 to take this test. That's the current cost as it stands, I believe, today. Um, you typically will take it at a testing center. Right now we are in the midst of a pandemic and I had to take a um, continual uh, education requirement and I can talk, give you a video on that because that's a whole other ball game. You can take it online with a proctor that will be watching you on like the video camera so to make sure you don't cheat and stuff like that but usually I took mine at a testing uh, center Pearson View testing center that are located here in Michigan and I tell you I was so nervous because they um, make sure your IDs are right you have to have specific IDs I've seen people that have been turned away because they they brought credit cards and had their name and their signature but it was not a governmental uh, government issued ID so then they had to be turned away and you have to re you pay that same fine again so uh, it takes about four hours to complete um, and and that is sufficient I found that to be make sure you take your time you know um, don't rush through it um, four hours is way more than enough than you think and don't overthink things uh, that think I think that was a downfall for me is I started to second guess myself. I'm, I would go in, I would be super excited. I wrote down my formulas because they, they'll give you like a like a board, like a dry erase board where you can write um, like your formulas down. I did it as soon as I sat down for the test because I didn't want to draw a blank and then, you know, not do well in the exam. So anyway, so it's hardly guarded. So again, it takes four hours to complete. So make sure you pace yourself well. If there's a question that you find yourself to be stumped on, then just kind of hit it for review. And, I, you know, and I'll go a little bit more in depth on the exam, but just kind of like an overview here. Uh, it, again, it's highly monitored. You need two pieces of identification. I know that one of my coworkers went for her exam. Her license was expired and they turned her away. So make sure the dates are all settled. Make sure you have the correct governmental ID. Again, it's on aart.org. Just go to that website and they will help you. Keep in mind that you have three attempts to pass this test. Three attempts. So that means if you take it the first time and you don't pass, it's either pass or fail. You have to take the entire test. So if you do well on, let's say, patient care and you don't do so well on image production, you still had to take patient care all over. You have to get a 75 or better um, in order to pass. So if you don't pass for the three um, attempts, you have to go back and, and do some schooling. And we, we're not going to worry about that because I'm going to help you pass that exam. You got this. So the good thing is you get a preliminary score before you leave. You need a score of 75 or greater to pass. So my advice to pass is to make sure you use various study materials and not memorize them because they have a way of rewording these things and kind of making you second guess. Um, so I use the um, Kaplan and um, Correct Tech, um, which is the most popular. They just provide some questions so it'll kind of help you navigate through some questions. They may ask it various uh, ways and things of that nature. So um, pretty much I think that it is a, a pretty good field to go in to. One thing I want to point out is if you look at the, again, the AART, they have a handbook. Um, you study each topic that they provide thoroughly. Um, they'll tell you like the specific amount of questions on a specific category. And again, just go to that site and go to the, um, I think it's content specifications for that. So please review um, my next video as I will give you my take on my the actual uh, field and exam experience. And I just want to encourage you. This is a very good field. I just wanted to be super honest with you. Again, I've been in it for about 14 years and I've grown a lot in it. Um, it's a job that I say is evolving and they'll always need x-ray tech. So if you are considering radiology or if you are starting the radiology program, congratulations to you. Hang in there and if you are considering it, I would say do a little bit more research, but I um, appreciate you all just tuning in. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and also hit the bell so that when I come out with new material over the career um, series that you'll get notified of that. You got this. Be encouraged. Okay, bye.